recording and not paying attention to those children. It is Wednesday, September 7th, and we're going to get to some learning bit things. Uh, you will need your notebook tomorrow, which is like, ta-da, but later. Uh, so this is just your heads up to try and make things look... What? Uh, to make things easier for you when you show up, we're going to have an actual bell work. You're going to show up and it's going to have directions and say so you get to start doing like a righty and a learny thing and stuff like that. It's going to be the bomb diggity. Uh, G bars and crackers you have until Friday if you're still wanting to turn those in to help out people. And Friday you're also doing a writing paragraph, which is why we're going to try and keep practicing to make you smarter. -er. And let's get into, all right, so let's get into our fun stuff for today. So we have the whole caring. We found out how much we care about writing, and the answer yesterday was not very much. So we're going to try and increase it to maybe just a smidgel. Um, so we have claim, which is going to be your opinion, because today you are going to start creating your own information. You're going to create your own claims and reasons and evidences, and you're going to have to like fight for a thing and use brainy bits and stuff like that. Yesterday was easy practice. Today is slightly tougher practice. Tomorrow is implementation, and Friday is freaking out. So that is sort of like our little period as we go through. So your claim is going to be your opinion. Um, now it's going to make fun of a kid, but that's right. Argument is going to be your generic, where you have the two different sides, where you get to pick a thing that goes into it. And then reasons are going to be your random opinions and facts, where you support however you feel. Evidence is my favorite, because this is where you, um, we get to creatively imagine what we want our evidence to be, which we'll get into definitely today. That's because this is the joy of us not being things like social studies and science that rely on facts. And the fact, I love English, where we get to put all of our facts into a little box and then throw them out the window. And then we had to switch, so instead of care, it becomes acre, because it's going to start with an argument, and then go to claim, and then go to reasons, and then go to evidence. So now we've done all of frontsy side, so now you can turn to backsy sides, and we have a little bit of an example. <laughs> so excited, you pooped a water hole. And so we're going to get to the back side where we have the two little things at the top up there. You get to use those to try and help you. Uh, did we do any of this with you guys yesterday? Some classes got to it, but you guys are just staring at me. You look confused. We're going to go, no, this will probably be a new thing for you. Uh, pause. Hey, we're back. Pay no attention to the fact that I had an issue. Uh, I'm perfectly normal and sane. Okay, so what we're going to go into now is, if you look on the other side of your paper, the one we just did the notes, there's a blank spot at the bottom. If you take finger and you put it on <laughs> where we have the notes, there's a blank spot at the bottom. In a moment, you are going to get a chance to write stuff there. Or you can not write stuff there. But I'm getting ready to call on you to give me examples. You could just hang on, it's okay. If you want to make your life easier, you can write stuff down here to make your life easier. If you want to just big boy it or big girl it and then just use your brain, you can try that too, but then don't freak out when I call on you. See on the other side where we have like the examples of an argument and then a claim and then a reasons and then evidence. We are going to practice doing that together now. I'm going to give you the argument, should kids have to learn to keep their room clean at home? What I'm going to give you guys is a minute and a half to write down your claim. Do you think that kids should have to keep their rooms clean? You get to pick a side. You're going to write down a quick reason. Why do you think kids should clean their room or not clean their room? And then give me an example of evidence. I know that you have not done official research. So here's where, for your research, you can use the good Dr. Doofenshmirtz, uh, or I'm going to use Dr. Dingle, uh, or you can use the website www.kidsordumb.com, and you can use that to officially cite it, or you can use the book by Dr. Dingle, Kids Are Dumb. And so you're going to come up with evidence to support it. In a moment, I'm going to randomly call on you. Our minute and a half starts now. So again, the small thing here, small here, this is where you're just going to jot down, connecting to this argument. Let's back up. You guys look confused and scared, and I don't want a kid to just die on me. Do you agree with the statement? Yes. No. Let's find out by a show of hands real quick. Should kids have to learn to keep their room clean at home? Is it going to make you a better person? So raise your hand if you say, yes, kids should learn to clean their rooms. Raise your hand if you say, no, dirty rooms make me better. There you go. Now you know what your claim is. 
your claim is whatever your opinion is on this thing. If those of you who say that kids should clean their rooms, why? Why can't we live in a pigsty with raccoons in the closet? Those of you who say that we should be able to live with our friends, the raccoons, what is your reason why? And then you're going to give me a piece of evidence where you are going to prove to your parents or whoever the big people are that you should be able to let your room be as messy as possible or that you should be able to keep it clean even though you hate having to do it. And then we're going to give you a chance to read your example out loud in just a second. And before you fill up that whole bottom area, we're going to do a second one in just a moment. So just to keep... I know, it's so awful. I mean, you could use the other little white piece of paper if you want to. There's like a big blank area below the woman crying. I'm just trying to give you guys... Or you could just use your brain and be like, Mr. Broviak, you can't make me write nothing. You're right, I can't. Boards. We're gonna go eat some popcorn. I don't want to get you in trouble. You know the teacher here is insane. here in a moment because I'm bored and you are here to entertain me. That's how school works in my brain. Let's begin. Um, you can keep writing stuff down. That's fine with me. We'll start with our claim. Bryce, what is, oh, hang on. When you do your claim, please don't start with yes because or no because because that you guys are familiar with the race thing, that restate, answer, cite, whatever. So just at least tell me what your claim is. So either, you know, we should have room cleaned or we should not have no to be like, yes, because I like to have my throat hurt. I'm going to hit you right in the throat. Bryce, what is your claim? Do you kids do not have to clean the room? That would be a solid, simple one. Nicely done. And then Jada, what is your claim? They shouldn't because Dr. Dewey... They shouldn't what? Juggle fish? Oh, okay, go ahead. Continue again from the very beginning. They shouldn't clean their room because Dr. Doopicky says the kids are slobs. Wow, you went ahead and threw evidence in that first one, too. Uh, I went for all humans need to learn organization and responsibility, and cleaning a room is the first step. You don't have to agree with me. You are welcome to go your own way. Now for your reason. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, Dimitri, what is your, wait, which side are you on? Are you on pro-clean or anti-clean? Pro-clean. All right, so what is your reason for pro-cleaning? Because, because kids are dumb and we need to learn to have responsibility. I mean, it's hard to argue with that one. That's like a fact right out there. Wally! Um, I put kidsardumb.com states that it teaches responsibility. And what was the second part? Uh, uh, states that it teaches responsibility. Did you say kids.com? Uh, kidsardumb.com. Thank you. I said make sure I heard the right one on that one. Good job. Although that's closer to evidence because anytime you can use that reference, which you can use for reasons. It's just most people save it for evidence, but that's fine. Because reasons can be either one. It's just evidence can be tougher. All right. Do I have anyone who is uh, anti-room cleaning who has a good reason that you want to... Bryce? If you keep cleaning your room, it will waste time because it will get dirty again anyway. That's the first thing. Do you live in my house? Because that is what my kid says all the time, too. And I'm like, why am I going to bother feeding you? It's just going to disappear anyway. So I just go gnaw on a log. They don't like that thinking, but I'm like, it's the same idea, right? So my reasoning was no person wants to find out the hard way that they have a raccoon nesting in their closet living off of an old pizza crust and spilled monster. So again, our reason is you just get to throw a thing out there. Wally has already played in the world of evidence because he threw his little evidential thing out there. Well, apparently we like the world of evidence. Who would have saw? Grovel! Um, my evidence. On, first of all, which side are you on? Uh, the anti-clean. Okay, go ahead. My evidence is that Doctor Mister Doctor said you shouldn't clean your room because it's bad for you. Nicely done. I've heard of him. He's famous. Shawls. Um, according to. <laughs> Wait, pro or anti? Pro. Okay. According to www. Kids. 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 <laughs> I heard kids, and then like a small hissing sound. So I wasn't sure if that was the website. Was it kids? <laughs> it's like a bunch of fiscal girls. Anyway. 
It is proven that they should clean their room. <laughs> it is proven they should clean their room? Hilarious. I can see why that one cracked you up. Caleb. Um, according to kids or dumdums.com, kids with messy rooms are more of a dum dum than kids who have clean rooms. There's a lot of websites I need to check out, apparently. This is good information. Cora. Um, uh, Dr. Fluffenheiser said um, that kids should clear, clean their rooms to learn good habits um, and be good members of society. You guys are enjoying evidence way more than I thought. We'll come back. We have more evidence you get a chance to do. Apparently you guys are enjoying that way more in my other class. I went for Dr. Dingus's book, Don't Eat That. It tells us that 70% of kids who discover they have closet raccoon nests end up living in Arby's dumpster by the time they are 19 years old. So again, evidence. It is proven. Dr. Dingus could not get that book published if it was not true. All right, let's do our second one and see how well we do on this one. We'll go a slightly different direction with... Should teachers have to give kids homework in order to help them learn? So we're going to do this. I give it. I'm not asking, do you like homework? I know you don't like homework. You have to tell me, is it a thing that we have to do in order to help you learn? Or can kids be smart and learn on their own? I'll give you a moment to come up with your claim. We'll see if it's as detailed as Bryce's was. He hit all the way up to five words. And then your reasons your evidence. You get to see how many more websites you guys are going to. <coughs> Do you think I can't see it? Because you put it lower? I'm old, not blind. <laughs> Scissors, paper, Spock, lizard. You guys gotta get on the new game. It's the five-way one. All right. Starting to get bored. I can't play paper, rock, scissors, Spock, lizard forever. All right, Noah. What's your claim? Um, teachers shouldn't give kids homework to help them learn. Because kids are just naturally smart. Yeah. It totally feels like a thing I would buy into a problem. <sighs> Molly! Which is like Wally, but different. Um, teachers shouldn't have to give homework. Teachers shouldn't have to give homework. So you went for the Bryce way. Way to channel that one. Nice little bit. You did that far. Wait. So let's see if I quick show of hands. How many of you guys are the whole teachers should probably give homework even though we don't like it because this probably makes you smarter? How many of you guys go, no, we should not have homework. We're just naturally smart. <laughs> you have a bunch of liars. But that was entertaining. We'll see how it goes from there. Uh, my claim is nobody likes giving or doing homework, but it is a necessary evil in order to make kids smarter. Let's jump to reasons. And we get a chance to go to that one. Oh, cloudy. Wait, are you are you're anti-homework? Or are you yeah. pro-homework? Oh, anti-homework. What is your reason for being anti-homework? Many students have after-school activities and can't complete it on time. No, that works for no reason. Nice to know. Wylan, you're pro-homework? Um, yes. Oh. According to Shrek the Elder, he says kids equal big dumb dumb do homework. <laughs> that works as evidence. Evidence can work for reasons also. All right. Wally? Um, I'm anti-homework oh. because they can do the work at school. No, that works for me. You would think that, but I gave my first period like 15 minutes to get the homework done, and I had multiple kids who just stare at the wall drooling. And so apparently, you know. Gussie! Oh, it's for evidence. Oh, let's go my reason. Uh, we would all prefer to be lazy in life and survive off licking wallpaper for the nutrients, but sometimes we have to do hard work to be better. Um, all right, what's your evidence? www www dot the uh -huh. um the um the, the, the doc the doc doctor dot com uh -huh. says students die like <laughs> from homework. That's uh, sounds like an interesting thing you put into his book like, with all of the acting. Okay. Steve, are you for or against homework? <laughs> You look shocked by your own name, Steve. I'm against it. All right. What is your evidence for why we should not have to do homework? Um. 
so we should do homework. <laughs> no, well, you have nothing, you've not proven it one way or the other yet. Steven. Um, because <laughs> Dr. Shink says that their mind gets mentally drained. <laughs> I like how you kept looking at your paper like there was something there to help you. Dragoon! Um, Mr. Manatee, teacher at Manatee Junior High, says multiple students perform better the next day when homework is not assigned. I went for, according to a recent survey, doing homework at least twice a week will make a kid taller, stronger, and better looking than the lazier ones. Ah, then... Let's go to, we're going to try and give you guys time to get your homework done, because apparently you guys really like evidence. Um, skip this one, even though it makes me smile. And then there. So let's go to, now the side that has all the righty bits on it. We're going to Yay. try and help you out from there. Mr. Rovia, I don't see the words. What? I, this part. No words. It's a friend for me. Yes. No words. Weird. So this is our homework. It is going to be due tomorrow, but in theory, you're going to have it done before that, all of my anti-homework children, and not just stare at the wall drooling. You will be reading some of your answers out loud tomorrow, just to give you a heads up, because just like we did now, we'll be running through, giving examples and stuff like that. No, did not mean to put there. That's just the long thing which says, turn paper over to the side that confused Gussie with all the invisible words on there. This is where you are going to be doing our very own from the very beginning. You're going to create an argument, pick a side, give me two reasons, give me three evidences. So one argument, one claim, two reasons, three evidences as we go through and do a thing. Wally? My paper died. <laughs> well, you can uh, use tape or buy a new one. Either one's fine with me. Cora? So this is a serious question, so I'm not concerned that we can make up evidence, but for the actual assignment, do you want us to make up evidence, or do you want us to actually look at it? Your actual assignment that you do in science or social studies, you can have to use real evidence. In my class, I, I'm never going to check your websites, so you're fine. We'll come back to your other questions in a second. So looking at this side, so making sure we're on the right piece of paper so you're not just writing it in a random place, so this is the part we're going to go through. I am going to give you an example one. You can't use my example one, you little cheater children. You're going to have to use your own brain. I'm going to show you how it works. What, Bryce? What's a care package? It's a thing in Call of Duty. <laughs> Claim, argument, reasons, evidence. What does P-A-C-K-A-G stand for? Package is like a collection of things you put together. So this is, I was trying to be oh. witty. Apparently, I failed you. Yeah. I, yeah, one of us definitely has issues. My argument is, should students be allowed to blow gum bubbles during class? So you should probably start off something with should as we go through and do it. Then I have to pick a side. My side is, no human should ever create a smackable round object that appears on their face. That is my particular claim. You could have taken either side. My first reason, I like hitting things to help me release my anger, and bubbles make easy targets for me to hit. And this has to connect to my thinking. If a gum bubble pops on its own, it can cover the student's face and cause them to suffocate. And so those are my two reasons. Evidence, we have to support it. So I have a quote from a book, a quote from a website, and then like an actual connection. I have, according to Dr. Dingle's book, dang, kids be dumb, seven kids a year die due to gum-related injuries. Oh, no. That'd be higher. In 2018, a kid blew a bubble in my room, and I popped it by swinging a dictionary at his head. He's still in the hospital to this day. And so that one can work because that is an actual example that happened in real life. Real life. Or, choking on gum is the 232nd most common reason for kids getting injured at school. www.gumisbad.com So I'm going to have you guys practice doing this exact same thing. If you're having struggles coming up, with your own arguments, here are child choices for you. You've just practiced doing these. You're partway done. You can do, should kids be allowed to stay up late on the weekend to play video games? Should kids have to learn to keep their room clean at home? Should teachers have to give kids homework in order to help them learn? Or, if you'd prefer to come up with something else that you find more interesting, I am fine with you coming up with a more interesting one. But if I try to make kids come up with interesting ones, they freak out and go lazy. So if you would like to pick one of those three, you may. If you would like to do your own, like should we allow Crocs at school because they make my brain hurt when I look at them, that is fine. 
and you could make something like that. So you get to make your choice. So this is where you're going to get a chance to fill it in. I am giving you time to work on it, but I'm also going to be distracting you in just a moment because we have another thing to do, and you're going to do what's called multitasking, which may or may not kill some of you. Uh-oh. And then the screen is going to disappear, but it'll come back in a moment, so don't freak out completely. All right, make the screen disappear. What we're going to do is what's called a read-aloud book. The two to three times a week, I'm going to start class by reading a book out loud to you, usually between five and ten minutes, depending on what we have going on. We're not doing homework over the book. We're not doing a quiz over the book. We're not doing a book report over the book. I've just learned that over the years, kids want to get a chance to have a book read to them. And so you guys are going to be choosing the book in a moment. I have five books that you guys are going to vote on which book you either like the most or hate the least. If you're like, I hate all of these, they suck so bad, then you're going to pick the one that you think is the least suckiest. Or if there's one you like, then you vote for that one. We will actually begin reading of them tomorrow. So I'm going to leave that, so I'm going to let you go through. You don't have to worry about getting tested on it because I know you're reading it because I read it to you every day and my voice gets to punctuate into your ears and make sure you have to build learning bit. All right, so I'll give you guys the options. Let's go back to this one so you guys have the things in front of you to help you. Home children, uh, your homework is to come up with a thing in the back because, again, this is going to be the homework that we're going to be going over tomorrow. But I'm not going to read the book options because if you're dead, unless you're Caleb, uh, he's the only dead kid that would care about this because he's in this class. Other dead kids, you'll just have to wait to see what book we chose because you're dead. So you have no option unless you're not dead. Congratulations on your lack of death.